welcome to our annual The Irish Outlook Special. Thank you so much for joining us on Fort Wayne's NBC. I am Chris Ryan. The season is starting a little bit later this year, but not by much. And with the COVID-19 pandemic certainly still surrounding, we're just thankful football can come at all. And tradition continues this fall. That's what Notre Dame football is built upon, tradition. A legacy captured on screen in 1993 when Rudy premiered on the big screen. Fort Wayne's NBC anchor Tom Powell spoke with the real Rudy about why the movie's message still resonates now, almost 30 years later. When the movie Rudy went to the dollar theater after its first run, my brother and I went to see it several days in a row. He'd say the words along with Rudy as he stood on that stool in the locker room and recited Newt Rockney's Get Him on the Run speech. For Notre Dame fans, it's the ultimate sports movie. But as Rudy sees it, it's much more than that. We're going to go inside, we're going to go outside, inside and outside. It's a movie we're moment. Run, boys. Once we get them on the run, we're going to keep them on the run. And Most Notre go, Dame go, fans. Go, 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 go. And we're not going to stop until we get across that goal line. Have memorized. The team they say is good. Well, I think we're better than them. Rudy Rudiger on his way to realizing his dream of playing football for the Irish. It's this moment, though, that always gets me. A father's pride in his son. My son's going to Notre Dame. Rudy follows Rudiger's hard-fought struggle from working in a steel mill with little money but a lot of ambition. Five foot nothing with hardly a speck of athletic ability. His determination, though, landed him a spot on the team and eventually on the shoulders of his teammates. All on one of the most famous fields in all of college football. Was that a motivation always to to make your father proud? Well, I think it was because, you know, he worked three jobs, uh, raised 14 kids. I mean, him and my mother, of course. But for his son to play at Notre Dame and graduate from Notre Dame, that was a big one, graduating from Notre Dame was his proud moment. Because it's not a football movie, not a Notre Dame movie. Not a sports movie, but a movie about life and belief and dreams and not give it up, staying positive. In a time when everything seems uncertain as the country deals with a pandemic and even the Notre Dame season is different and uncertain, Rudy says we can take the message from the movie and apply it right now. Stay positive and look at what you can do and not what you can't do. Reinvent yourself, too. And that's what I had to do. Uh, reinvent myself and that's OK. Rudy has taken his motivational speeches to Zoom, talking with multiple college teams during the pandemic. We talked about a lot, including the moments from his journey that he wishes they had more time for in the movie. That part of our conversation coming up later. Thank you, Tom. You'll also hear what Rudy is up to now and a new way to hear his lessons on inspiration. Now we veer our attention to a more recent history, taking a look back on the season that was one that started out with much promise and closed on a high note, but we can't forget that thunderous hiccup in between. Heading into the 2019 season, the Irish had one goal in mind. We can come back here and win. Make another trip to the college football playoff, but this time, go even further. And two games in. We don't have to do anything different. We got to keep doing what we're doing. Perfection. But after a nail-biting loss at then number three ranked Georgia. Uh, we challenged them. They accepted the challenge. The staff accepted the challenge. Uh, they responded. The mission still possible. They were determined. They were persistent. Then came October 26th. Go Blue! Go Mace! A trip to the big house turned into Notre Dame's nightmare. Felt like we weren't who we were physically defensively, offensively. We're a team that makes plays. We weren't making any plays. Any playoff hopes dashed. That's not the team that, that I have seen play for the last few years. The Fighting Irish had two choices. Give up on 2019 or fight back. They chose the latter, winning their next six straight to close the year 11 and two. They did not listen to what the naysayers have to say about him. Head coach Brian Kelly leading the Irish to double digit victories in four of the last five seasons. Always looking to better themselves. 
The last time Notre Dame did that, 1988 through 93. I always remember this group as a special group. And now, with their starter under center returning. There was a lot of reasons to tell me to go back, and I feel really comfortable. I haven't thought twice about it. For one more year. Coach Reese is the coordinator. All the offensive line coming back. That's huge. The Irish still have that initial goal in mind. And get us to a national championship. 2020, their chance to exceed expectations. One player who could make those expectations a reality from right here in the fort. The list of Fort Wayne athletes who've donned gold helmets goes on from Jalen Smith to Tyler Eifert. And now Homestead grad Ben Skoranek is a guy we'll be keeping a close eye on. Sports reporter Megan Sally shares his story. Ben Skoranek's parents describe him as competitive and relentless. Two traits that began at a young age chasing around his older brother Matt. Well, those characteristics set him up for success and a shot to play at Notre Dame. Last winter, Ben Skoranek entered the transfer portal as a Northwestern wide receiver. Skoranek eligible for one more year after a severe ankle injury. He needed to prove that uh, after his surgery on his ankle that he was going to be 100% and be able to play at the same level. So Skoranek rebuilt his foundation, which surprisingly began right here at Coventry Taekwondo. Enrolled him thinking it was just gonna be maybe a three month thing, and five years later, he had his uh, black belt. Spirit of Taekwondo with courtesy for college students. Every single sport requires speed, quickness, balance, strength, connected the mind with the body. The discipline and athleticism carried over years later. I got a tear in my eye the first video I saw him send of him running. He just kept saying, something, something better is going to come of this, Ben. Something better is going to come. Notre Dame came along. That was a game changer. Ben first changed games at Homestead. Now he can alter outcomes for the Irish. And he just feels like it's the place that this team is going to be special to follow in Chase Claypool's footsteps. Miles Boykin. And some of those other players is, yeah, that's important to him. But I think Ben knows he needs to be Ben Skoranek. And prove his fight isn't over yet. There's certainly going to always be a few doubters but the doubt fuels the fire. Skoranek's parents tell me Ben and quarterback Ian Book became friends almost immediately. Prepare to see that chemistry on the field this season. Reporting at Homestead High School, Megan Sally, Fort Wayne's NBC Sports. Hey, we have just kicked off. Plenty more ahead on the Irish outlook as Skoranek isn't the only Fort Wayne man suiting up for Notre Dame this season. From one player finishing up a decorated collegiate career to another just starting hit. Megan Sally makes the trip over to Shields Field when we return. Get ready to go fast with Lassus Go Rewards. You'll earn points on select items in the store. And with every 500 points, enjoy five cents off per gallon. Save up to $1 per gallon on your next fuel purchase with Lassus Go Rewards. And to go even faster, Lassus Go Debit Plus Rewards members enjoy all the benefits of Lassus Go Rewards plus additional fuel savings with seven cents off a gallon. Download the Lassus app today to start your Lassus Go experience. Need a body shop? Peter's Body Shop, we make it shine like new. Why do I have to wear a mask? Will living in the dorms be safe? Why do all the playground clothes? Am my dad going to be my teacher? What do I do with my kids while I'm at work? Will I be able to play sports this fall? Is there still going to be recess? Are high fives okay? This school year, when you have questions, Fort Wayne's NBC News has the answers. Fort Wayne's NBC News, focused on the Ford. The Ivy 
Frankfurt family tree. Oh, it's a competitive one. Three boys, all who played high school sports at Bishop Wenger. That's where we catch Megan Sally. Megan? Tyler Reifert shined as a football star right here. Now this year, he enters his eighth season in the NFL. But before becoming a pro, he capped off a stellar college career at Notre Dame. Now his younger brother Griffin follows in his footsteps. Running onto Shields Field is exciting for a high school football player. But Griffin Eifert's new path will look more like this. The sounds, the feeling Griffin's older brother Tyler knows well. There's nothing better than running out of that tunnel. An unbelievable experience between the people that I met there, um, the experiences playing in some of those big games, big stadiums all around the country. Griffin gears up for a similar experience, committed to the Fighting Irish. Just growing up watching my brother play there and being on campus weekend after weekend for four years, um, I just felt familiar with them. I don't think in his mind, just like when I was growing up, I don't. we didn't think we'd ever have that opportunity to go to Notre Dame or be good enough to play football there. Tyler soars beyond his own expectations and after Notre Dame lands in the NFL. Now it's time for Griffin to prove himself. It's like a chip on my shoulder a little bit, uh, just knowing that I have um, a legacy to fulfill. You have that drive as a walk on to prove yourself that you belong. He's got his brothers who have been successful in college and so he I'm sure he he's got that extra motivation to want to do do well for himself. Tyler tells his brother to embrace his first year, learn from mistakes, bring the intensity. And when the load becomes heavy, Griffin reminds himself of that vision in the back of his mind. Running out of the tunnel. I always think about that when it gets tough. The journey as a walk-on is a battle, but he's prepared. It's in his blood. We've all got his back. Griffin's other brother, Brady, walked on to the Purdue basketball team and became an important player in the 2019 NCAA tournament. There's no doubt that Tyler and Grady will share advice with Griffin along the way. Reporting at Shields Field, Megan Sally, Fort Wayne's NBC Sports. The Eifert family, much like the Ryan family, except for the playing sports well part. I digress. Like I said at the beginning of the show, we're just lucky to have a football season at all this fall, but the Fighting Irish faithful won't be able to see it in person. Fort Wings NBC reporter Louis Tran with more. Notre Dame football is a big money maker for the university. According to school officials, nearly $200 million is generated by football each year. But this year, only a percentage of that will be made. Because of COVID-19, school leaders will limit seating to 20% capacity. Those seats will only go to students, faculty, staff, and select family members of players as well. Strict safety measures will be enforced, including all spectators must wear a face mask. But many fans aren't too happy about the news. I just don't. Mask, gloves, and I probably wouldn't enjoy it because quite honestly they couldn't seat me in my seats and I'll, I'll sit in my chair and watch it on TV if it is in fact on TV but it's not going to be the same. My dad's been texting me he's super upset about the whole situation I know we don't get to tailgate so that's going to be a bummer but I know we're all just excited to watch football. Now the tough thing is that it's only Notre Dame students and not local South Bend residents and that is obviously unfortunate for many people. School leaders would Notre Dame say they're working with the St. Joseph County Health Department. They also say they're looking forward to the day when the pandemic is behind us. COVID-19 taking its toll on all sorts of businesses, even the ever bustling nature of sports betting and its newfound legality within the state of Indiana. Fort Wayne's NBC reporter Vince Lovergene brings us more on one local sports book that's recently gotten back on track. Notre Dame football, a big draw in New Haven. Vince? COVID-19 has had an impact on a lot of us and even sports bettors. But here at Winter Circle, it's a new day. Sports teams are coming back to our TV screens, which means sports betting is back. It's good to see sports on the, on the TV again. 
That is something most like to hear. The general manager of Winner's Circle, David Doyle, was excited to reopen in July, but for him, safety was his priority. We had to have all of our ducks in a row, and you know, how can we reopen safely for not only our guests, but our team members to make them feel comfortable and confident to come back to work. Closing for nearly four months, Doyle says sports bettors have to wear masks when coming through and need their temperature taken while also operating at 50% capacity to create a safe environment. And Doyle also says the crowds have been a good mix. We, we've had some folks that um, I would consider as regulars that have come back through. We've had some folks that are new that I don't recall seeing before. Um, it's a good blend, and before we shut down, it was a good blend before. With the hopes of college football resuming, Doyle believes Notre Dame will have a big impact on sports bettors. Just historically, from looking back at last year, college football was very big, and Notre Dame was a very large part of that. While taking its course to reopen, Doyle was ready to get things going again. I, I was ready to come back and um, you know, get to see all of my work family again and, and see how they're doing and make sure everybody was good. And Vince Lovergene, Fort Wayne's NBC. When we return, I sit down with Irish Illustrated's Tom Loy for all your Irish insight, previewing the season ahead and still to come, hear what the famous Brody is up to now with Fort Wayne's NBC News anchor Tom Powell. You're watching the Irish Outlook on Fort Wayne's NBC. When news breaks, turn to the people you trust with Fort Wayne's NBC News, alerting you with our mobile app, taking you live to the people scene. People were lined up on both sides of the ML. Bringing coverage focused on the fort, showing you what's happening now, next, how it affects you. Focused on urgency, focused on accuracy. The tension that boiled over when here. news in breaks, downtown. trust Fort Wayne's NBC News, focused on the fort. Please welcome Drew Barrymore. I've been waiting all my life to meet you. It's been a wild ride. Can you believe I have two daughters around your age? Kind of scary. I have so much to fill you in on. Want to hear about our new daytime show? I'd love to. We're going to spend an hour every day celebrating life. Oh. I'm so excited. I could scream. Want to do it with me? Guys ready? <laughs> the Drew Barrymore Show, starting September 13th on Fort Wayne's NBC. Welcome back to the Irish Outlook. Now I am joined with the man who knows all things fighting Irish football. It is Tom Loy of Irish Illustrated. Are we ready for some football? Didn't know if this day would come. I am beyond ready. I'm not going to lie. I've got a little love recently with the, uh, the high school football scene here in Fort Wayne, but there's nothing like college football. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful time of the year. I mean, I know it's going to look a little different this year. We've got a little bit over the last couple weeks, but I am beyond ready for some Notre Dame football. I'm going to go right to last year, and I feel like Irish fans have to be pleased despite that hiccup in the middle, and that was a, a bit of a nightmare, a, a rainy, stormy nightmare at the big house. But outside of that, what would be maybe your perspective on last season? And then how do you think the team feels about how they performed? Bump in the road would probably be an understatement. Yeah. But I mean, honestly, like you talk to anybody around the program, everybody's very excited. Um, every, nobody's really worried about last year. It is what it is. It, it happened. Move forward. This team is absolutely loaded um, from the top to the bottom. As you know, we've talked about it before, but the hype train is rolling. Um, and I think that everybody around the Notre Dame football program should be very excited about what's to come. And it starts at quarterback. I mean, you'd love to have an experienced guy. Ian Book has all the experience that you need. I, I talk to a lot of people around the program. Obviously, you know, we uh, have pretty limited access around the team and practices and whatnot. But everybody said he came back stronger. Um, you know, he looks better. But I think the biggest thing for him is the mentality. Um, he knows how big of a year this is. And Ian Book is the, is the guy that could take them over the hump and get them back in the, in the college football playoff. Tony Jones gone. What about that backfield? Who do you see emerging out of there? Kyron Williams is the man. No question about it. I, I, was, I, I want to give a shout out to Tommy Reese. He's the guy who stood on the table, wanted him to get the offer, Notre Dame offered, and, and it's paying off because he's, he's you know RB1 right now. He's a guy that can kind of make guys look foolish in the open field and then has enough speed to take the top off the defense. Lance Taylor has to be licking his chops because this group is loaded at running back. And then a wide receiver, we kind of have a bit of an 
added interest here in the fort because <laughs> Bennett Skoranek went to Homestead just down the street. What does he bring as a transfer over from Northwestern? He brings leadership. He brings that veteran mentality. Um, he's, he's had a successful college career at Northwestern. He had success against Notre Dame right in front of their eyes. You know, we talked about Ian Book. Ben and Ian spent time together in California. They got really close. Um, they hit it off. I wouldn't be surprised if Skoranek had, uh, you know, was the leading receiver on this team this year. I expect a big year from him. You got Javon McKinley, Avery Davis. There's a lot of moving parts. We talked about him a couple times last year, Braden Lindsay. Yeah. Um, this, this, again, this group has a ton of speed, talent, um, and now you have a, a veteran addition in Skoranek. The D-line, edge rushing, lost some big names last year, but when you look at the guys who are still here, there's still plenty of talent in production. What do you see out of that unit? Yeah, losing Julian Aquara and Khalid Kareem is a loss, no question about it. But Ade Takumbo Ogandiji is an animal off the edge. Dalen Hayes was really starting to turn the corner. I expect a really big year from him. Interior-wise, uh, Myron Tungvaloa Amosa and, and Kurt Heinisch are kind of leading the way there. So, again, another really talented group for Mike Elson, the defensive line coach. The same thing with the offensive line. You have veterans that, that have been around the system for a couple years, and these guys are just going to be, uh, you know, really impactful for a successful Notre Dame season. Just how talented is Jeremiah Wasu koromoa and what can he do this year just production-wise? Wu is a big-time talent. I mean, he's a first-round pick. These guys recruited this guy because they saw that type of potential. Um, they saw a day one pick down the road, a difference maker on defense, a Jalen Smith type player, um, and he's going to be that guy. You hear a lot about speed on that side of the ball. Defensively, maybe Notre Dame is as fast as they've been in years. But what do you think might be the defining characteristic of that front seven? I honestly just think it's overall talent. I mean, this is the most loaded group that I've seen um, from a Notre Dame defense in a long time, but it also is because of the fact that they've been in the system for a couple of years. You know, we look at the linebacker position um, and you have Drew White who's been in the system, and I think a lot of guys were writing him off as just like a, a role player or maybe a, a second team guy. But he, everybody I've talked to around the program is, is saying he's lights out. This all sounds great, but it doesn't work as we've seen if the secondary doesn't work. Like we saw against Clemson when Julian Love went down, what have you seen out of the secondary? Some names in there that maybe people haven't heard. I will say the best piece and best move that they made was pairing Kyle Hamilton and Sean Crawford at safety. This is the first time that I can remember since covering Notre Dame that you have two genuine playmakers, guys that have instincts, guys that will bait the quarterback to throw at them, and they will 100% take advantage of that. Looking at the schedule, First year in the ACC, maybe the only year in the ACC, but a chance to beat Clemson and maybe get some revenge. What will it take for Notre Dame to win that game? I think it all revolves on, on number 12, Ian Book. He didn't play his best, no question about it, when they met in the college football playoff a couple years ago. This is a very different player, person, quarterback. I think that we are going to see the best version of Ian Book we've seen since he arrived. Trevor Lawrence. Um, Travis Etienne. Clemson is loaded, no question about it. Brian Brzee, a true freshman, a former five-star, he's going to start along the Clemson defensive line. He's going to want to get at Ian Book. But I have all the faith in the world that Ian Book can take them back to the college football playoff. So a lot of positivity. What's the overall prognosis? Where do you see this team going in 2020 and maybe even 2021? Well, I do, I do see a, a college playoff berth. Um, and it'll be weird. It's, it's really going to be interesting how that, that, that first game uh, I expect them to play Clemson twice. I expect them to play them once in the regular season and then meet again in the ACC title game. I do believe this team can compete for a national title, and I genuinely do expect them in the playoffs. Well, Tom, thank you for joining me tonight. We hope to have you again as the season rolls on. Hopefully, another trip to a playoff. Can't wait. Thanks for having me. Coming up, we conclude the Irish Outlook on Fort Wayne's NBC with more on the legend Rudy himself. The foundation of his story captured on screen near 20 years ago. It's still one he uses to inspire people to this day. That's next. Every day we take steps to keep the people we love safe, but some health risks are easy to miss. Ticks hiding in the yard can spread germs, like the ones that cause Lyme disease. Mice searching for food can spread bacteria that makes us sick. Mosquitoes lay eggs in standing water and can spread West Nile virus and more. Cockroaches are drawn to water in the home, leaving behind allergens that can trigger asthma attacks. Common pests can threaten our health. Learn how to protect your family at pestworld.org. More than 20 veterans and first responders die by suicide every day. 
It's time for a change. LifeAid is an initiative that uses new technologies and therapies to address the health of the brain, delivering a more precise diagnosis, which leads to better outcomes and a better life for those that are suffering. Help us help our heroes in these uncertain times. Together, we have the power to give the gift of hope. Go to lifeaidhope.org to learn more and donate today. We hear the stories of people whose lives have been left hanging by a thread. Or whose worlds have been blasted apart. And whether it's care or community that people need, we're here to help them live a new chapter. Be a lifeline to the most vulnerable. <gasps> Staring contest! Still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Welcome back to the Irish Outlook. Now, earlier in this special, we spoke with Daniel Rudy Rudiger, the inspiration behind the 1993 movie Rudy. Here's Fort Wayne's NBC anchor Tom Powell with more from Rudy about the moments that weren't captured on the big screen. All right, Chris, let's run them down. Three moments from Rudy's life that he wished they had time to capture on the big screen. Number one, in the movie, we see Rudy go from high school to the steel mill to Holy Cross. But did you know he also served in the Navy? It was the Navy that gave me the confidence that I could do it. I was in the Navy before Notre Dame, which you didn't see in the movie. He says the Navy prepared him to deal with adversity. We watched him open one rejection letter after the other until he finally opened the one that said he made it. He was accepted to the University of Notre Dame. That was the proof right there. That ties in to number two, the second moment Rudy wishes they had more time for in the movie. You see him meeting Coach Era Parsegian, but you didn't hear this part of their conversation at his office at 6 a.m. in the morning, letting him know when I was at Holy Cross, I was gonna get in Notre Dame, and I was gonna walk on as a junior, and he looked at me, and I said, I was in the Navy. You in the Navy? Said, yes, sir. She said, so was I, where'd you serve? I was in, I trained in Chicago and did, did two big cruises. She said, wow, so, so was I. I was in the Navy, and I uh, trained in Chicago. I said, wow. So we had a connection. Then there's number three, the third moment Rudy would have loved to see on the big screen, Bangle Bouts, the campus-wide boxing competition. That's how I got to be known on campus, through the Bangle Bouts. It's uh, uh, all the dorms, they pick guys to fight against the other dorms, which is really cool. And I was off campus, of course. He tried to get into the bouts when he was at Holy Cross, but got kicked out. Then during his junior year, once he was a Notre Dame student, he became the runner-up, and then during his senior year, he was the Bengal Bouts champion. The Bengal Bouts is what I won and got the respect of a lot of the players in the football team because I beat a couple football players. Daniel Rudy Rudiger on the moments that didn't make the final cut. His story, though, still an inspiration as another season of Irish football is set to kick off. Chris? Thank you, Tom. Speaking of respect for and from football players, this year's Notre Dame Fighting Irish giving and receiving plenty of it when they led a Juneteenth march on campus. Juneteenth celebrating the day in 1865 the United States abolished slavery. Notre Dame football using the day to raise awareness against social injustice and doing so as a unit. The death of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and countless more we're not here to grieve their deaths, but to celebrate and honor their lives. We honor their lives through how we make effective change in our community. We honor their lives by how we remain proactive in our activism. We honor their lives by standing for what's right. A powerful preface to what could be a fantastic season, not only on, but also off the field. Everyone, thank you so much for watching this year's edition of the Irish Outlook. Don't miss the Notre Dame's home opener Saturday at 2.30 and stay tuned following the game for my live post-game report out of Notre Dame Stadium. We have you covered all season long as we bring you local coverage on fighting Irish home games right here on Fort Wayne's NBC. Have a great night.